Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, beautiful day to be alive, another beautiful Friday here, broadcasting to you guys from the DCF studio here in the south side of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Beautiful day to still be kicking. Uh, some decent weather here in Chicago this week, uh, a couple cold days, a couple rainy days, Couple hot days. That's uh, that's Chicago this time of year for you. So hopefully everybody's doing well, everybody's staying safe during these crazy times, and uh, glad to see everybody here to be able to join us. So uh, let's see what do we have going on today. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who checked out this week's video where we featured this pair of Madagascar Sunset Moth inspired Jordan ones. The first time we did a new series called Recreating Your Designs, where we let you guys pick the designs, send them in. Uh, we pick our favorite one, and then we try to bring it to life. And it presents a lot of challenges. It's not as easy to do. And uh, one of the main reasons for that is because typically when you're designing, especially when you've been doing it for a long time, as you're building a mock-up and as you're thinking about your end design, you're also kind of thinking through the process of how you're going to paint it. You're You're thinking about the not only the destination of where you want to get, but the journey of how you're going to get there, essentially, when you're designing a shoe. That's how I think about it. As soon as, as this is an all-white shoe and I'm planning up my design when the customer gives me a theme, I'm planning out how, how I would do it. And uh, essentially now, you don't know anything about the journey. All you have is the destination. You need to try to find a way to get there. So it's really interesting. You have to essentially reverse engineer it. And so... Yeah, it's uh, it's a, uh, it's something that uh, this was a, this was a very interesting test that I very much look forward to uh, doing again. And this pair, as I was making them, these took me a long time to do, a lot to Jordan ones because there's so many panels, there's so much of going back and making sure they're exactly how you want them. Um, that I, I knew that these were gonna right away be a uh, very, very meaningful pair to me. Right away, it was gonna be a pair that was gonna be up in the. Uh, pantheon of my all-time favorite shoes that I've done. So uh, that's a very exciting feeling that I'm sure a lot of you guys have felt before if you've been customizing shoes for any length of time that um, sometimes you just know. You just know when you're working on a pair and uh, you just feel it in your bones that like, man, I am, I'm cooking up something awesome right now. And so that's what I felt with these. And sometimes you're working on something and you're like, what What do I have going on? It's, it's not coming together. But sometimes it is those last few steps to till everything really comes together. For example, on these, I did all of the color work first of the yellow to blue to purple gradient. And then I did the uh, orange gradient on the medial panel in the toe box, the orange to yellow. And uh, so the black swoosh, that black upper heel panel, and this tiny little panel right here were the last things that I did. And without those, they still weren't, they still weren't, uh, they still, to me, they still weren't there, you know what I mean? So it was those last few steps that really brought it all together. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's even the last few things you'll do, something like the laces that really just tie together a design. So that's how it can be sometimes. So yes, what is going on with you guys? Tell me how everybody's doing here in the chat. 78 people watching right now. Thank you guys for joining us again. Uh, hope everybody is having a uh, good Friday. So yeah, Easter this weekend here in the... Uh, states so uh unfortunately you most likely won't be able to gather with uh, as much as as much of your family as you might uh typically be able to do but uh hopefully you guys are still able to uh enjoy that so uh let's see here um so interestingly enough last night i actually did a, a little uh instagram uh live i hopped on with uh my buddy wally champ he's out in uh California, an extremely talented artist. If you guys don't already follow him on Instagram too, he does some awesome work. And uh, he asked me if I could join him for about an hour and we ended up chatting for about three hours on uh, Instagram Live. It was awesome. We had a bunch of people in the chat. Uh, a lot of you guys were probably there hanging out with us. So that was super cool. So uh, that was uh, that was a good time. Always good to chat with another customizer and uh, it's very cool. And you know, during these times, a lot of us uh, people who do this full time are, are kind of used to essentially working uh by being isolated and working in your own kind of space so although you know business is, is certainly going to be slower for everybody when nobody's focused on luxury items um but 
still very, uh, I feel very lucky to be able to uh, stay busy and uh, continue to work during, uh, during these times. So, yes, let's see here, guys. Um, some questions about uh, what is, uh, what can we do about um, Angelus being shut down and not shipping orders? Unfortunately, um, uh, any place that does sell Angelus, any other website, they also get their Angelus products from Angelus, of course, out in Cali. And since they're not sending orders out to anybody, uh, there's really no places that you can get it. I, I know that Angelus sometimes is on Amazon, so you might be able to get certain colors or certain little products on Amazon if they still luckily have anything in some of the Amazon warehouses, potentially. But even as far as that goes, I know that Amazon is not uh, sending out every type of product uh, as frequently and stuff. So there's even delays in Amazon shipping. So yeah, it's tough right now. Uh, nobody can really get everything they need to need to do. So that's tough. So hopefully uh, they should be able to uh, start sending out products. I think initially they had said their plan was that they would be able to ship, I think, next towards within the next two weeks hopefully they'll be able to uh so we'll see i am uh, i'm waiting on an order from them too thankfully i have a, a lot of stuff still i'm able to keep going but yeah I've, I've gotten a lot of messages about what do i do i can't get uh some stuff that i need to do so angelus yeah so some people are saying amazon still has some so that's 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 good stuff that's good stuff um let's see here uh, what else? What else? Uh, another thing I did on Instagram this week, I had a chat with um, a, a uh, customizer who's grown extremely huge on TikTok. So his name is LGR Customs. He's also on Instagram. I think he has probably around 17, 18,000 followers on uh, Instagram. But on TikTok, he has uh, about seven or 800,000 followers. And uh, he's he's he posts a lot on there, but he's only been doing it about three month, three or four months or so, and he's already grown. He's not that far off from a million followers on TikTok, and his most viewed video is uh, it has around fifty two or fifty three million views. And to put that into perspective, uh, Kylie Jenner, who might widely be considered one of the biggest influencers out right now, uh, isn't even guaranteed uh, fifty million views on one of her videos that she might put up on Instagram or anything. So. To get 50 million views on a TikTok video is mind-blowing. Now, of course, you have to do something with that, but in a way he has because he's he has the followers now on TikTok, and if you check out his work on uh, whether it be on TikTok or Instagram, he's moving a lot of products. So, you know, a lot of people always ask, uh, you know, how should I go about growing on Instagram, TikTok? It's, it's all about just testing and, and trying out different things, and I was talking to him a lot about it because I'm very interested in the how do things happen? How did you do this? What do you kind of attribute the success to? What do you think worked for you, for you? Was it a certain time of day posting? Was it posting three times a day? Was it using the certain trending songs on TikTok? Was it collaborating with anybody? You know, what was it? And for the most part, he he just said, I don't know. I don't know. I just post. You know what I mean? And his videos are not complex at all. He's doing it everything from his iPhone. He's not doing any post-processing. What I mean by that is he's not uh, editing it in any other video editing software. He's doing it all on TikTok, and uh, absolutely insane. So uh, I had to uh, bring him on Instagram Live and talk to him about it and, and try to just ask, uh, what's what's the secret? You know what I mean? What do, you, uh, what do you recommend to anybody who wants to give this a shot and try to grow on TikTok? And uh, he just said, just post. You know what I mean? Basically as simple as that. So crazy, 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 crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's hop here in the chat and see what you guys are up to. Uh, so some questions about spray paint, some Posca markers. Um, uh, interestingly enough, I talked a little bit about uh, uh, markers with uh, Wally Champ last night. I don't use any type of acrylic markers. Uh, the one time that Wally says he uses them, which I could see some use for them is, and it's not the Posca markers or anything like that, is uh, kind of undoing like an outline on something. Maybe you're doing an outline around a swoosh or, or something like that, outline around a character or something like that. But uh, for the most part, a lot of the stuff that you guys are seeing, uh, I know there's some videos on YouTube from other people doing stuff with uh, Posca markers. I hope I'm saying that right. Posca, I think that's how it's said. And uh, spray paint. I know uh, 
I'm not one to name names, but I saw somebody doing uh, spray paint on some shoes. That stuff's not going to hold up, so it's just uh, kind of just for fun, just a little artwork that is, uh, you know, credit to them because the, the art is awesome, you know what I mean? But it's not something that is... Uh, wearable and actually durable and that's the type of stuff that I really strive for that's the stuff that you'll always see me focus on and uh, try to try to bring to you guys so yeah absolutely absolutely so uh, Nick says could you sell some uh, stencils to us yeah if you want to check out our Etsy we still are uh, able to uh, send out orders so we will have that uh, linked in the description I also added um, a a few videos so if you head to the video description in this video I have a, a little section for uh, recommended videos and I wanted to have that because I have the the four videos that I have up are essentially what I would consider the four most frequently asked questions that we get and uh, I wanted to have these videos for you guys to be able to go to so of course a beginner's prep guide it's where we do the uh, Salmonto Air Forces that's probably our best uh, tutorial start to finish on everything you need to know about prep and everything uh, what you should be charging, because everybody always asks, how do I know what to charge for my custom shoes? Uh, things like that. Uh, how to airbrush a gradient. And then the last one is how to make a multi-layer stencil. And we go into everything in that video as far as, you know, how to do it in Silhouette Cameo, what vinyl cutter we use, what specific type of vinyl do we use, and all that stuff. So definitely check out some of those videos if you are interested. Uh, okay, so... Um, so the Angelus refillable paint markers, uh, those work because essentially what you do is you thin out your Angelus paint with uh, too thin and you put it through there. The reason that I don't like those is it's pretty hard uh, to achieve consistency in my opinion. So I have some when they first sent them to me uh, maybe three years ago is when they first had them. And uh, it's cool because you can make custom colors and load them into the markers. But uh, it's just very hard to get uh, consistency with the marker itself because of how tips dry up and it's hard to get a consistent uh, line weight and a consistent amount of paint coming out of the paint marker. So that's why I don't really use them. Uh, it could be potentially me just not having the best luck with them. But uh, believe me, I tried a lot of different ways as far as how much I'm thinning out my paint and all this different stuff, and different markers. And uh, so it's never been for me. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see here. Is uh, Google, Googly I review says, is there a way to transfer an image without a stencil or freehanding it? Yeah, so we have uh, two videos on our channel where um, we go into how to do a image transfer with just uh, transfer paper. Uh, not transfer paper, tracing paper, and uh, you can do it right from your phone or a tablet, and uh, you just sketch it on there, and it just really helps give you a really clean, um, a really clean, um, essentially map for you to follow. So definitely, uh, definitely check out those videos if you uh, need to. Uh, yes, uh, I will try to. Uh, like Beckham Customs uh, says here, uh, I'm trying to get to as many questions as possible, guys. Um, Especially like different types of questions, uh, stuff that is a little bit outside of the norm of the uh, same questions that I answer every single week. Uh, because a lot, a lot of people like to uh, come in here and hang out. And so, yes, I want to uh, try to answer some new questions always, always. So uh, Fabian10 says, will you ever have a custom anime shoe competition? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have been holding off on waiting to announce our next competition uh, which we wanted it to, we wanted to do in the spring and, um, we were likely leaning between either doing a floral theme competition or an anime theme competition, leaning a little bit more towards floral, especially for the spring, but because everything is, uh, everything is just, uh, nothing is normal now, essentially now is probably not the best time for us to, uh, announce a contest, even though everybody's home, people are limited as far as what they can get with paints and, you know, how they could get shoes to work on and all this stuff and just everything being a little out of whack right now. We didn't want to, uh, we wanted to wait a uh, little bit until, uh, until we, uh, announce our next one. So let's see. Uh, da, da, da. uh, J Styles Custom says, what thickness mylar plastic do you use for your reusable stencils? Uh, it just depends what your cutter can handle, but the, uh, most common mylars out there are four, seven, and ten. 
Um, so you can use any of those. Uh, vinyl cutters, tabletop cutters, are not meant to cut mylar, just as a forewarning. So that um, you might you might have a little bit more success using a uh, a different material. So. Uh, Philip Joseph says, do I need to add tooth in to my mixture of paint and GAC 900 to airbrush a sock liner? You do not need to use tooth in if you are going to be airbrushing a sock liner because the GAC 900 or too soft will thin out your paint enough. Now, this can vary case to case. You're going to use something like that at a one to one ratio, GAC 900 or too soft with your paint. And uh, you just kind of got to let your mixture speak to you. If it's still a little bit too thick, then you can mix in a little bit of uh, too thin to make it run through the airbrush a little bit cleaner. But for the most part, when you're mixing paint with too soft at a one to one ratio, it's going to be plenty thin to run through the airbrush extremely easily. So something like this, if you guys saw this week's video, we started off by airbrushing the sock liner first and just a one to one ratio of paint to too soft is uh, plenty thin to run through an airbrush. Uh, da, 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 uh, 08, Rain in 08 says, uh, have you ever tried a patina custom? I see it done on dress shoes, but I wonder if it's possible on a jump man. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, that's something that, uh, definitely I think falls in line with a, a style that I would like to try because to create that, you're just, uh, essentially trying to create somewhat of like a rusted or, or worn down or weathered look. So I think that that could be really cool. And, uh, uh, for the most part, what you're likely referring to on dress shoes, it's done in a patent leather. So it would look pretty cool. So yeah, that's something that could be uh, very cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rafa Dip says, what is the difference between acetone and Angelus deglazer? Acetone is a little bit stronger than Angelus deglazer. So, um, if, if you're ranking them in terms of strength, it would be acetone is the strongest, um, stuff that you need to be the most careful with, then Angelus deglazer and then nail polish remover way, way, way below both of those. So as far as prepping shoes, you wouldn't want to use a uh, nail polish remover. Definitely not uh, strong enough. Um, a good affordable airbrush. I see a couple of people talking about airbrush. The one that I use is a Badger Patriot 105. You can pick them up for under $100. So it is a uh, great value to use. So definitely check out one of those. Uh, Mr. S says, would you custom classic Adidas? I would absolutely custom uh, anything and everything. Anything that a uh, customer wants, a client wants, I would, uh, I would be glad to do. So uh, let's see. Uh, Marl Dane says, I have a, a question. How would you approach making a rusty copper look where it looks like it was out in the weather and kind of running down with age? So somebody who does that very, very good is, um, is, uh, Sab One. He has a lot of really cool weathered stuff, especially, uh, he's over in Boston and he has some really cool stuff inspired, uh, inspired by some famous Boston landmarks, uh, some... I want to say it's called like the Tobin Bridge. I'm not too familiar with uh, the Boston area. If anybody is, forgive me, and maybe you could uh, let me know uh, if I'm talking about the right thing. But uh, I believe it's the Tobin Bridge, and it is uh, it has a weathered look, and he really achieves that. It's kind of all about how you essentially do your streaks and things like that with the airbrush. So. Uh, I'm nothing says, is it worth buying an airbrush when you're first starting out? I don't think you need one when you're just starting out. I think you, that you can be uh, fine with just uh, paintbrushes to just get started, get your feet wet with custom sneakers, especially if you've never done anything before, like um, if you've never airbrushed before, if you've never done uh, graffiti, if you've never really worked with spray paints, uh, it could be a little bit of a, uh, a challenge to get used to to start, so... Uh, Freddie Gray says, is leather paint uh, necessary? Is Angelus leather paint uh, necessary when doing a custom shoe? It is. It is if you want it to be wearable and uh, done correctly and durable and hold up. Yes, you absolutely want to use the uh, right products. So uh, don't do that also. Don't send in the uh, same question uh, 100 times. I'll try to get to uh, as many questions as possible, but don't do that because there's a lot of people uh, hanging out in the chat. So... Uh, Lyndon Jacobs says, how did you start advertising yourself in the beginning? So when I first started doing custom shoes all the way back in, uh, 2011, I was, um, mainly, uh, posting a lot on places like, uh, Facebook sneaker groups. And, uh, that was when Instagram just started out. So I was really just, uh, posting on there. 
And that was uh, the place where uh, there was no TikTok yet. YouTube certainly wasn't as big. So that is where uh, I was advertising to start. I was doing a lot of uh, sneaker conventions and stuff when starting out. So plenty of places that you can uh, advertise. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what else did I want to say? Uh, we'll get to some, uh, we'll get to some, a, uh, some, uh, Instagram critiques. If you guys are down for that, we will do some of that a little bit later today. I know we had some, uh, some people asking about that. So, um, Gabriel Rezo says, how do I fix a shoe when I mess up? The good thing about paint is you can kind of always start over. Uh, it just depends how bad your mistake is. It depends what happened. And uh, that's that's kind of the good thing about paint is that uh, it's forgiving as far as you can start over if you mess up that bad. And believe me, we get sent uh, pictures every day on, you know, here my paint peeled or, or something messed up. What should I do um, as far as, you know, uh, moving forward? Can I just paint on top of uh, a crack or paint peeling or something like that? The issue with that is you're kind of just putting a Band-Aid over it. So sometimes you need to really get back and re-prep everything. So it just depends on the mistake. It really does. It really does. But like I said, it's paint. So it is uh, forgiving and you can always uh, kind of start over if you need to. Uh, 1988 says, I'm looking for an affordable sander. I don't want to spend too much money since it's only being used for prepping. Any suggestions? So the great thing about uh, the sanders is they will save you a ton of time. I believe the one that we use is... Um, uh, about $40 on Amazon. It's made by uh, the uh, tools company Ryobi, who typically always has those like lime green, a real light lime green tools that you see at Home Depot. And uh, yes, so uh, Repsy says, is it still cold in Chicago? Uh, we had we had all the seasons this week, man. We had a uh, very nice 70 degree day, uh, followed by a little bit of snow the next day, uh, followed by a ton of wind the next day. And probably around 40 or 50. And uh, yeah, it's been all over the place. Uh, you just, you never know what you're going to get this time of year. So it is crazy stuff. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Let's see here. Who else do we have? Uh, I, I touched on the Posca. I touched on the Posca pens. Uh, questions a few times. I know those ones will always come in because you see other people using it. My answer is kind of always going to be the same. I, I never recommend them, guys. But uh, the best thing you can do is learn. Uh, sometimes the best way to learn is through, uh, well, not sometimes, always the best way to learn is through trial and error. You know what I mean? So you can give them a try yourself and see what happens. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Jack George says, if you could have your own paint line from Angelus, what would a five color set look like for you? What a cool question. What a cool question. Um, I'm going to have to think about that. Um, my five color set, what would it look like? Um, five color set. So I would like, uh, uh, I would like the DCF blue which is not far off from pale blue, but uh, the color of our logo, I think that would be very cool. Uh, I would like to redo some of their neons, specifically like the neon yellow. It is incredibly uh, a, a pain in the butt to work with. So really like a incredibly bright, like kind of in between neon yellow and neon green. Uh, that would be a cool color. Uh, they, they added the color in the last, uh, couple years. It's, it's a little off in my opinion, but the Vachita color, like a Vachita leather, leather that, uh, was done. Who was doing the, uh, Jordan 4s and that, uh, Vachita tan leather years back? I know JBF did some in Hender Scheme. Yeah. So if you could get that color, uh, so that's, uh, three. Uh, light, light gray is, uh, my most used color just, uh, cause it's a great base for everything. So that one is a non-exciting one, and uh, boy, uh, I think I would pick a, a a specific red that is essentially like a combination of red, fire red, and chili red. Because sometimes I like mixing all three of those together to get uh, to get my favorite red. So I would get like a DCF specific red. So a very specific red, a a redo of a highlighter yellow green, light gray. DCF blue and uh, what was the other color I said? Uh, there was one more that I had said. The blue, the light gray, the neon color, 
the red, and the uh, Vegeta tan. That's what I would pick. That would be a very cool set. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the, <laughs> Nick Kessler says the DeJesus Angelus kit would include a pack of toothpicks. It absolutely would have to. Uh, it absolutely would have to. Uh, another question comes in from Nick. I'm working on my first customs and I forgot to take care of the threading fray after sanding the shoes. So there's areas are all gunky from the paint. So uh, what you can do, Nick, is get a, a nose hair trimmer. And uh, even though it's over a painted area, you can still run the nose hair trimmer over uh, some of that frayed stitching and it'll uh, clean it up a lot. So definitely pick up one of those. Uh, OG Boggs says, how do you paint over black with red? So we have a video from last year. Uh, the title of the video, I believe, is called How to Color Swap Any Cleat. And essentially, when you're going from uh, something that's not white, any other color uh, a, on a surface, what I do is try to convert it to light gray. Because once I have the surface painted light gray, I know I can then make it any color. So let's say you're trying to paint a black Air Force One, a leather Air Force One, and you want to paint it red. Rather than painting red directly on top of that black, what I'm going to do is first get that to uh, light gray. So that's why I always preach uh, light gray is so great to use. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, James says, uh, did you get a refund for the art space? So uh, James is probably likely talking about the DCF experience, our course, which was supposed to be next week, April 18th and 19th. I was so excited for it, and uh, we, we did have to postpone it, and uh, unfortunately, I still can't really uh, pick a date yet because uh, it's essentially we need to wait till, um, you know, it's, it's announced that it's safe to have gatherings of 20 plus people again, and um, uh, I did, we, we certainly held out as long as possible because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I'm an optimist hoping that we could have the event, but as we got closer and we started to realize uh, a lot of the people coming to the event started reaching out to us and, and addressing their concerns. And of course, and you know, we are going to be in a very large space. But um, with the 20 people coming, I really want it to be a very interactive uh, environment for two days of 20 creative people working together, not everybody making sure that they're six feet apart and stay away from me and then the person who sneezes or coughs gets gets looked at very funny and everybody tries throwing them out we didn't want anything like that i want people huddling around each other and looking over each other's shoulders and seeing what somebody's doing and just interacting in a very fun way that's what i really want the dcf experience to be about so until it's safe to do that it's just the uh the best thing to do to uh, hold out for that so yes of course um i did uh the space was the um space the venue i'm holding it at they're not open anyway so they were uh very cool about it and they said you know as soon as uh everything's good to go you can uh reschedule for a later date so that's where that is i was very excited our sort of our plan was as we got closer to this to likely plan out when the uh second course would be a little bit later in the year potentially towards later in the summer is when we were thinking um, but, but now it's just, ev everything's up in the air as far as when, uh, life will be, uh, back to normal. So, uh, like I said, I'm an optimist, so I'm certainly hoping sooner rather than later. That is for sure. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Brotistic Custom says, Walmart shoe contest, it's open and affordable, could be interesting. That's funny. That would be a funny one. Uh, that would be a funny one. Ghost Bear says, what is the most challenging custom you have coming up? I have a re really, really unique pair coming up that it's pretty funny. It is a John Deere inspired Jordan, and I'm very excited for, uh, how am I going to, it's, how am I going to pull that off and make that, make that cool? Uh, taking such a, two just totally opposite things, John Deere and tractors and Jordans and finding a way, finding a way to <laughs> intertwine those. That's going to be an interesting one that uh, I'm excited to give a shot to. Uh, Geeky Acrylic says, I want to paint my first pair of customs. Do you recommend airbrush over brushes? I have 15 years of painting experience with brushes and an airbrush I never used. Airbrush seems intimidating. When you're just starting out, you want to do your first pair. You have 15 years of experience using a paintbrush likely often, go ahead and get started with a paintbrush. Um, you likely can do almost anything you need to do with a paintbrush, especially when starting out. So 
uh, just get the hang of it and totally, I, I didn't use an airbrush until maybe six months to a year into customizing. So do not worry about um, using it right away. And interestingly enough, funny enough, when I was in the sixth grade, so how old are you when you're in sixth grade? About uh, maybe 12 years old. My mom is a big uh, DIY person, loves uh, DIY everything, so goes to arts and craft shows. So one time I went with her, and at an art and arts and craft show, there was a guy who, he had a table, and he just had all airbrush things. And I believe, uh, I, don't, I don't think he had his, a motorcycle. I'm trying to think of what the big thing he had on, what his big display piece was that was so cool. He might have been airbrushing live. I know he showed us later, but his car, he had a PT Cruiser at the time, for anybody <laughs> remembers those uh, cars, he had it totally airbrushed, and uh, it was super cool. He was he was just a, uh, he had been airbrushing forever, I don't remember how many years, because I was, uh, this is like 2003, so 17 years ago, I'm in sixth grade. So, my, so moral of the story, my mom signed me up for airbrush classes. I don't remember exactly how many I did, probably maybe somewhere from five to 10, but I would go in for an hour and just learn the basics of airbrushing. And so in total, I maybe did it uh, an hour each time. So somewhere maybe, you know, five to 10 hours. And then I picked up a, uh, uh, my parents picked up a compressor and an airbrush set for me to practice at home. Um, but I didn't do it that often. But uh, thankfully, I had at least used an airbrush in the past when I finally got into customizing shoes, uh, oh, who knows, 10 years later or, or whatever after that, and I had at least held an airbrush before. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a funny story on how I uh, just started airbrushing for the first time. So let's see who else we have here in the chat. What are we talking about? Uh, cheap shoes to start. Yeah, reps, uh, so uh, some cheap shoes to start. Um, go to thrift stores, really. I mean, you, you might be able to find old Air Forces, old Jordans, look on eBay for used shoes. If you just need shoes to work on, one thing that I'm going to say that, um, uh, it could very much be a, a pain because it's not a fun process to do. You could pick up a shoe. Let's just say the kind of one of the gold standards for customizing nowadays is the Air Force One or Jordan One. You pick them up for around $100, what you could do is paint them in the theme of whatever you like. Go ahead and capture some content of you making them, all that stuff that you always hear me say. Go ahead, take your final pictures, take some videos of everything, have some ways to document it, post it to your portfolio on whether it be your website, Instagram, whatever it is. And then like I've said, it's paint, so you could essentially acetone it all off and start over and do it again and kind of keep reusing that base shoe. Now that is not fun because... If you were to, um, if I were to try to acetone all of this off and try to make this shoe white again, uh, it would be damn near impossible. And one big issue is that paint would inevitably kind of end up on the midsole, um, which would essentially kind of almost, uh, I call it like dye itself into there. So if I took a cotton ball and acetoned all this off and was scrubbing real hard, the black, the purple, the blue would rub off into the midsole and some of it would kind of dye itself into there and this midsole wouldn't be as white. But hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And if you're just using the shoe, not even to be worn, just to practice on and just to get content out of and never for a custom customer to wear it or anything like that, and you're just using it to take pictures of and post new work and practice and things like that, you could paint that midsole white again. Now, that's not going to hold up if you were to wear those, but if they are, excuse me, just for display purposes and just for picture purposes, you could paint that midsole white and uh, you might be able to get away with that. So, yeah, oh, oh wait, Rainin says, I've done that process before. It uh, takes forever. It absolutely can. Uh, Ethan Neary says, is GAC 900 safe to use? Yes, it is. It is not uh, GAC 900, uh, especially if you're talking about... Um, is it safe to breathe in? It's nowhere near as strong as breathing in uh, something like um, acetone or, or deglazer, which is uh, a, a lot stronger. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Christian Dominguez says, what is your most expensive pair of shoes that you've customized? I have worked on a pair of uh, Kanye's Yeezy 2s. 
uh, I worked on the platinum colorway and we painted them to look like the net net colorway from the um, uh, Kanye, uh, the Air Yeezy Once. So that was the uh, most expensive pair that I have worked on. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Jelki Gaelic, uh, hope, hopefully I said that right, buddy. Uh, should you start your business local? Absolutely. Start with your friends, your family. Uh, you know, if you're in school, start with people in your high school, start with your coworkers, whatever you do start with, uh, yeah, people, uh, uh, word of mouth is going to be the best thing ever. You know what I mean? So if you can get people around you, uh, wearing your product and you're doing, and you're making a good wearable, durable, uh, great product, the word will spread fast. Uh, let's see, uh, a name that is in symbols, so I can't read it, unfortunately, starts with Teo, says, I'm making customs where I have a futuristic look to the shoe, and that involves making certain parts look like black glossy metal parts. So can you give me advice on how to make it look cool and good? Interestingly enough, we have a video lined up coming soon on uh, kind of like a glossy look versus a matte look and how you would do different things like that. And so when you're going with a future futuristic look, uh, some of the things that come to mind are, you know, essentially like metal and, and very modern. So yeah, you're going to want to, uh, play up a uh, glossy versus matte to create a contrast. And so the gloss that I like to use, you can use a product like a tree house spray, uh, Krylon high gloss spray, liquid kicks has a, um, a gloss spray. The Angelus high gloss is not that glossy. I'll just come out and say it. So that is something to consider. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dragonson says, best way to do a gradient with a brush instead of an airbrush if we're just starting out. I would try to, uh, watch some videos on YouTube on, uh, color blending and things like that because that's essentially what a gradient is. Um, I would like to do a video on that in the future, um, but I don't, uh, I'm certainly not an expert with it because I'm primarily an airbrush kind of guy. Um because gradients are so much easier that way and an airbrush in general when you're when you're doing a lot of stuff at once is just a little bit faster so that's why I kind of use one a lot so yeah but uh that's a question that does get asked all the time so I would like to do a video on that in the future uh let's see uh Oviet Custom says what is your favorite shoe you own like the one you wear the most I love 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 I, how many pairs do I have of them? Um, I have three pairs of black cement threes. I have uh, two pairs of the ones that released in 2018, I think, two years ago. Uh, one of them uh, is has never been worn. The other one I've worn a few times. And then I have the pair... Ooh, somebody might need to help me out. Uh, when did the black cement threes come out? Before this last release, uh, without the Nike Air, with the Jumpman on the back tab, I want to say that was 2011. Now that pair I've worn hundreds of times, but uh, Black Cement 3s are absolutely uh, my favorite shoe of all time to wear. <laughs> uh, Drag Dragon Sin, uh, th this is a great question. Last question, how many pairs of customs does your wife have? I would say she probably has that I can think of. I can think of five that she has. Uh, yeah, she has some slides, some roaches, some NMDs, some bands. She's got a nice wide range of stuff. Um, and yes, I think of five. She probably has some other ones, but I can think of five. And uh, she does wear them pretty regularly, which is uh, cool because you always want to wear your work. You want to be a uh, walking business card. Um, so some people said 2011 about the um, uh, Black Cement Threes. So cool stuff, cool stuff. Uh, Michael T says, where do you get the basic shoes? Example, Air Force One, Jordans, thank you. I wish I had a great answer on where to get shoes wholesale and things like that. I get that question every day. I still pay uh, full retail for all my shoes too, guys. So if anybody ever does find a place to get shoes wholesale or bulk or get, you know, nice white, all white uh, Air Force One, Jordan Ones at a discounted rate, please feel free to let me know. That would be awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 um, 
Felipe says, any grails that will never touch the ground? Uh, I don't have any, uh, so the most expensive pair of shoes that I own is I have the, um, uh, the Platinum Yeezy 2s, I've worn those. I have the South Beach LeBron 8s, the shoe that uh, first made me want to do custom shoes. I ended up getting a pair of those uh, years later. I have a pair of the original Dornbacher Jordan 3s. Those are probably like my most uh, kind of expensive shoes, and I've worn all of them. Um, the, the two shoes that if I did get them, I don't know if I would wear them. I probably would because it would be too hard not to, is the Freddy Cougar SBs and the Paris SBs, but I would probably end up wearing them. It would be too hard not to if I actually got them, but yeah, those are, the. oh, if I could ever get my hands on those, that would be awesome stuff. That would be awesome stuff. Uh, does your baby have, oh, of course, so Dexter, uh, Dexter has a couple pairs of custom shoes. We, uh, made him a pair for his, uh, first birthday <laughs> his first birthday was a, a, a power ranger theme party so we hooked him up with a power ranger theme pair of vans for his first birthday and then when we made uh like our little uh announcement that we were having a baby we painted a pair of uh baby converse with his name on there and so he uh, he has two pairs that uh, i've uh, done for him and he just started walking like a champ in in the last month now he's walking all over the place. So now, now he actually needs to wear shoes, and especially as the weather starts to warm up here and he's outside a whole lot more. Uh, that's when uh, we definitely got to have him walking around in some fly stuff. So, uh, Panda Hazard, uh, this, this is a good question. Are ads on websites like Instagram worth it? It really depends. It's case to case. I've certainly experimented with it. I think I've run, I haven't done it in uh, about two and a half, three years. Um, I tested probably in, uh, one month, I would say about two and a half years ago. I remember testing Instagram ads. I think I tested five and I tested them at like five very different denominations of like maybe $1, $5, $10, $50 and a hundred dollars and just wanted to see what would happen. You know, how much traffic would that bring in stuff? And, um, I think, my advice, if you're looking to spend money on advertisement, here's here's how I would spend it. Because, um, for the most part, nobody ever wants to be shown ads, right? Ads, something in your brain ties it to it being, uh, uh, push it off to the side. I don't want to see it. It's annoying. Somebody's pushing something on me, right? Okay, sure. Now with the ads, do you get eyes on the product? Absolutely. Does a company like Coca-Cola spend, I think, billions, maybe billions of dollars per year on advertisement? Absolutely. So is there a time and a place? Yes. But if you're looking to spend money for advertising, you have $100. Here's what I would do is I would uh, I would paint a pair of shoes and try to give them to an influencer. Reach out to a kid on TikTok who is growing and has 100,000 followers and say, uh, can I paint you a pair of shoes that you wear in your TikTok videos? And and that, uh, in my opinion, that $100 that you spend there, now you have to spend your time making the shoes and your uh, money on the product to, to create the shoes because paint and all that stuff isn't free. I get it. But uh, spending your money that way, advertising that way, I think is uh, going to bring you more of a return on your investment because now somebody who's an influencer, somebody who's cool is wearing your product. Now all of his little following is going to think, Hey, that's cool. I want to be like him rather than you posting an ad on Instagram that everybody sees and just scrolls past it anyway. Cause it's a, it's an ad. Like you don't want to see ads. You know what I mean? Even when there's products that you like, you still just, you're like, damn, I'm seeing an ad. You know what I mean? Like if you ever go on, if you ever do any because, because, who man, the, the, the money in, in, in agencies and the, the time that goes into ads is they know everything about you and what you search online. Just like, you know, if you go and do any online shopping, you search something on, gosh, I don't know. Let's just say, let's just say you're a, a male and you go on, uh, let's say you want to buy, uh, you want to buy a, uh, some sports, uh, sports memorabilia of your team. So I'm a Chicago fan. Let's say I look up, uh, some Chicago Bulls stuff. I'm looking for a new Chicago Bulls hoodie. I go on NBA.com, go to the Chicago Bulls, look at the hoodie section. 
I close out because I don't want to spend $90 on a hoodie. Guess what ads you're getting <laughs> for the next five days on Facebook and Instagram? Because uh, as we all know, Instagram is owned by Facebook. Um, <laughs> guess what ads you're getting? That The Chicago hoodies and the NBA.com website, it's going to be pushed down your throat. So nobody likes ads is uh, the, the very long way of me saying this. So uh, Repsy, I want to say thank you for taking care of the stuff in the chat. There's no need to uh, spam, guys. Like I said, I tried to get to as many questions as uh, as possible. So Ismail Torres says prep is more important than any finisher, and that's a fact. That is absolutely a fact. And um, um, the reason for that, uh, I talk about it. Uh, I have a cool graphic in a video called Five Simple Steps to Painting Better Cleats. Um, if you could follow me right here <laughs> with a little example of let me uh, let me switch here so I can see myself make sure I'm making sense um, okay so pretend uh, pretend you have an image right here of an iceberg okay and here's the divider line of the water so here's what you actually see you know what I mean the the iceberg sticking out that the Titanic is about to hit but as we all know from the images we've seen of icebergs is they're like six times in length um, as far as what's under the water. It's what you don't see. You know what I mean? So to me, that's all the prep work. That's all of the proper application, the proper dry time, all of the boring stuff. But everybody thinks that little stuff that you see at the top, that little sliver of the iceberg peeking out of the water is the finisher. And people think the finisher is what saves your custom shoes, but it's actually the iceberg. So I'm going to find a way to have that in the live streams for me to bring up in the very near future. So uh, I can always reference that because that's uh, one cool way that I like to think about it. Um, okay. Uh, Dread Eye says, if you've answered this one before, but do you have any tips or tricks for using a cameo? Um, so there is a, uh, so Silhouette is the company that makes the cameo. They have a YouTube page just search up Silhouette Studio. I, I want to say the page is actually called Silhouette School, but they have all of the great uh, intro videos and um, all, just all the basics on how to start how, pulling it out of the box, everything, how to, how to turn the blade, set the blade, all of the very basic stuff. Now, something that we've absolutely considered is um, doing... Uh, a, a full unboxing video. So us unboxing a new silhouette cameo and um, from literally pulling it out of the box like an unboxing YouTube video that you guys have seen to setting it up and cutting your first stencil. That's something that we've absolutely considered. It would absolutely need to be a 30-minute uh, video, which is uh, uh, something that sometimes isn't the smartest thing to do for YouTube potentially because of people's retention time and I'm somebody who rambles so it's hard for me to compact it into 30 minutes anyway. So it's uh, something that's been kind of on our list for a long time but we've always said ah, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. So we will see. Definitely something we've considered in the uh, future though. Uh, the Right Magic says, I've never used an airbrush before and I'm so intimidated by it. Any tips on how I should start? I'm an old school artist and paintbrushes are my best friends. Now, if you guys haven't before, uh, The Right Magic, uh, uh, her name is Mel also, is the artist who did the Disney bands that we featured on an episode of Reviewing Your Customs. Incredibly talented uh, artist. And uh, yeah, you have, uh, those, those paintbrushes are for sure your best friend. But when you're just starting out with an airbrush, uh, you know what I mean? You're an artist at heart, so you'll you'll pick it up right away. It's uh, it's it's just a, a little bit of a different uh, application method, you know, how the paint is actually applied. But uh, just uh, it, it's personal preference totally, but you'll be able to do, you will absolutely be able to do some cool stuff with an airbrush. I would absolutely look forward to seeing what you could cook up with one, that is for sure, because... Uh, the, the blends and stuff that you could do, not to say that you can't do them with a paintbrush, but they are absolutely, anybody would tell you, easier with a airbrush. That is for sure. So it is, uh, it's not too hard. It's not too hard to get started. There's just uh, some very simple, uh, somebody pointed out in the chat here, dagger strokes. There's very simple, um, just strokes that you'd want to get used to for, you know, what to do with uh, with applying it because, you know, it's not just about, 
uh, spraying paint the entire time. You very much have to get used to uh, spraying and, and letting go and starting over. And you're not just holding down the entire time and, and spraying the full amount of paint throughout the entire process. So, yes, it, it does not take very long to get used to. Uh, Dizzy Design says, do you do mock-ups on your tablet or laptop before touching the trainer with any paint? Uh, sometimes, yeah, it absolutely depends on the project. But yes, sometimes I definitely do because I need to uh, figure out what the heck am I going to do with them. Uh, Google AI Reviews uh, says, if I have a shoe and I don't know the material, how do I prep? I would try to figure out what the material is. Um, a lot of times on uh, you'll be able to look it up online, what the materials are on the shoe and then uh, make a determination on how you should prep it. So that's what I would do. Uh, so if you guys are down, let's go ahead and check out some Instagram. So if anybody's down, if, uh, if somebody could do me a favor, potentially you, uh, Repsy, or maybe our buddy uh, Kong Customs, uh, somebody who's in here hanging out with us all the time. Uh, if you guys are down, mention your Instagrams below, but something that I've said before is also please, uh, Instagrams where you have a little bit more for me to critique, then everybody can learn a little bit, uh, better and I can provide a lot more value rather than just if you only have, you know, one to three posts or eight posts or something like that, then there is, uh, a whole lot more for me to be able to talk about. So... Uh, let's see. Uh, Maldain says, also, did you put together a textbook or workbook for the class or any more thought into a challenge theme? Um, uh, so I didn't necessarily want to have all 20 people, um, forced into doing one thing because I think so many people are going to come in with a, a, a very, very, we're, with 20 people, we're going to have a very wide range of of, uh, expertise and experience. You know what I mean? There's absolutely going to be people who have little to no experience and there's going to be people in there who have years of experience in the class. So I didn't want to overwhelm anybody and, and I wanted it to be very free flowing so that everybody can kind of pick their theme. And, and before we even lay paint to shoes, we'll go over, you know, planning out themes and everybody will, will go through the process of, of picking out the right theme for them to try to accomplish in the class. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Jamie Scott says, what editing software do you use? And do you know any free ones for my videos? Um, I, uh, what, the, what's the one that's already on uh, Mac? Is it, it might be iMovie. Uh, I'm not sure if Final Cut is free. I know that's another one that a lot of users use, but we use Premiere Pro. Um, I think uh, years back, I know on uh, PC or Windows, it was called Windows Movie Maker. And I believe that was free. So those are absolutely ones that you could do to make movies. But yeah, there's even there's even apps nowadays on the phone where you can where you can do some video editing, and um, it just depends what type of level you are trying to uh, what type of production level you need to bring. So uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, let's see. Who are we going to start with? Whoops, didn't mean to pull that up. Let me swipe that away. Good old technology here. Let's see here. Whoopsie says, oh yes, let's take a look so you guys can all see... We are going to take see the phone. Let's see. Properties. iPhone. Uh, okay, give me what? Not that. Give me one sec here. Just trying to plug that back in. I don't know why it wasn't finding the phone. Okay, there we have it. There we have it. 
Okay, so we are going to go to the right. Is the mic still on? Can you still hear me? Somebody confirm they can still hear me because I switched screens. James Lee says, I'm drinking game every time he says, wow, you guys are about to turn up and get pretty drunk because I already know uh, Mel has an incredible page also. So, like I've mentioned before, some of the best Disney-inspired work that you will ever see can hear. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So Mel primarily does uh, Disney-themed stuff, tons and tons of vans, and uh, even I know that she's ventured into some Air Forces. Look at this. This is cool stuff. Uh, Mel is also a master of the work in progress, uh, as you can see here on these Beauty and the Beast Air Forces. Look at that stuff, being able to work across all those different panels of an Air Force and um, even uh, across the swoosh and things like that. Just absolutely incredible. Uh, some other stuff. This is the pair that we featured on Reviewing Your Customs. Look at that. That is wonderful. The pictures are always cool. The setting. Look at how elegant the setting is of, of, of the photos for the Disney stuff. This one's actually a video. But, you know, it's up against white, uh, some type of white cloth, whether that be, you know, some type of drapery or something like that. And then the, uh, you know, the white roses. I mean, it's just, it's awesome stuff here against the Air Forces. Almost looks like it's up against a white rug or, or white blanket. So that is uh, awesome stuff, Mel. Awesome stuff. Huge fan. Um, she always gets uh, the, the pictures from her clients out in Disney. So that's always super cool, too. Just always very fitting, very fitting. The the photos, the videos, always cool stuff. The work is even better in person. I would vouch for that also. Some very cool bags, Disney bags and stuff. And so this is a great thing also for everybody who is um, just looking to do something else too besides just shoes and sometimes, hey, I don't have any shoes I can work on. Paint on other things, paint on bags and, and whatnot. There is plenty of other stuff that you could do. So incredible stuff, Mel. Great page. I think that what's also cool is just as you kind of quickly scroll through the page, there's very much a, a color scheme and a feel. It's, there's, a, there's a pretty hef, heavy emphasis on, as you could tell, a lot of white and stuff like that. Very commonly, a lot of her uh, final photos and videos will be you know up against white, like we've already uh, shown in some of the... Uh, videos and photos so a very cohesive feel to the feed just absolutely great stuff mel everybody make sure that you go and give her a follow if you have not already and uh yes repsy said it but uh mel is also an er nurse so thank you to all of our nurses and doctors out there also my wife is also a nurse and uh you guys are uh doing some incredible stuff for all of society right now so all of us thank you so, all right, here, let's switch back here. Uh, okay, uh, Rupsi Kong, you guys let me know if you guys see another good page that we can take a look at. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, so uh, there's some questions about uh, uh, a cake stand that makes for a cool, uh, you could do some cool videos with. Uh, we used to use one all the time. We, th for some reason, it broke on us. It was a cheap one. You can get them. You can get some. You can get them starting at maybe ten dollars, all the way up to really good hundred dollar ones where you have a lot of control on the speed and things like that. So a a little cake spinner that can be electronic. Sometimes they can be controlled with apps on the phone. Sometimes they come with lights, depending how crazy you want to get. Sometimes. They make for not only a very cool display, but you can then take some cool videos, get some cool content out of them, and uh, things like that. <clears throat> mm, let's see. Okay, let's do. Uh, let's do our buddy, our longtime supporter on the page. Let's all check out JS Custom Kicks. Let's uh, do it. Let me go ahead and add a uh, Kong Customs, added a couple couple more mods to the page here today. Uh, Kong and Repsy 
hanging out in the chat, keeping an eye on everything. So we are going to check out, let me switch over here. Uh, camera reviewing your Instagram. Here we go, here we go. We are going to check out JS Custom Kicks. Okay, so Jory Oakleaf. Jay's Custom Kicks, 17 year old artist shoe customizer. The Shoe Wizard, DM or text, 150 plus price ranges by shoe and design along with his website there. Now that's a very simple, straight to the point bio. Uh, I always like a nice bio that's kind of in a bullet point format. You'll always hear me commend that one. Let's check out what we have on the story. Post, always staying active on the story. That's great. So it looks like I'm going to, how far back do we need to scroll to see? Jory here has one of the uh, classic Instagram feeds where everything, uh, very much hard part about these, uh, I want to first commend the theme that you're going for here is you're trying to capture the shoes at nighttime. But if, if you take a look at them, of course, they have very much this very, very strong orange hue on top of them, and that's because of the street lights. Uh, it looks like you shot these, can I, uh, on some type of, uh, maybe a bridge or something like that. It might be, uh, I can't tell the area that well, but, uh, yeah, the, the street lights leave an orange hue. So unless you're shooting with a, a DSLR and you know how to control, I'll always commend that trying to do something different. Let's take a look at some of the other work. Uh, let's see. Some Run DMC Adidas, those are clean. All of you guys should know about the history of Run DMC and Adidas. For all you young guys, go and look it up because they are they are pioneers in footwear and part of the reason why uh, sneakers became something so mainstream. Little Galaxy Drip Air Force. I like this uh, setting. I can't tell, is it, what parts of it are photoshopped and what aren't, but I like the all-white brick. That's cool. I'm... I'm I want to take a guess on how you set that up, and I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it looks cool. It looks cool. I'm trying to figure out what you photoshopped versus what you didn't, but it looks cool. So I dig that. I dig that. The 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 colors also very much pop up against the white brick, so that is cool too. Uh, so there's a cool combination here of. Um, of uh, you doing some photoshopping to your background, such as on these Adidas, we have the different flags. Like here we have the American flag. And so that's cool stuff. The cleats up against turf, of course, a great natural setting for turf. Uh, the These air forces up against the hardwood. You can never go wrong with hardwood. Always makes for a great setting. These are pretty wild. These Murakami Air Max 90s. That's cool stuff. All the basketball shoes, but this pair of Kobe's, I have no idea if these are Kobe... Third, I don't know what number we're on for for uh, my man Kobe's shoes or, or Kyrie's numbers or any of that, but um, yeah. So uh, I dig the feed. Uh, I would say this is this is this is good stuff. the The photos are never they never are there. They they get the job done. They absolutely get the job done. You're trying different stuff. Continue to do that. Continue to step outside of your comfort zone like this nighttime shot. I'll, I'm going to be honest and say, hey, I've been there. If you scrolled way back on my feed, I have photos like this, but nighttime shots are hard to nail. So continue to try to work on that. Look up things like nighttime photography and how you can get better at, at that. But this is the first time I saw you do that. So continue to step outside of your comfort zone. Try new things. Try things that not everyone else is doing. But this is uh, some cool stuff. So keep it up. Keep trying new things. The uh, feed looks good. Keep it up, buddy. Good stuff. Good stuff. That was a cool feed. Shout out to our man, Jory Oakleaf. Everybody go ahead. Give him a follow. Jay's dot custom people in this community. It is free to double tap on their photos. It is free to leave them a comment. Talk about their artwork. Talk about the photo. Talk about what you like. And, uh, you know, the more we engage with each other, that's that's just always going to be a good thing. You know what I mean? And hopefully they'll pay the favor back. And uh, that's that's a great way for you to grow. Okay. Uh, Dad Lab says, any preference on pics with natural backgrounds versus Photoshopped? Uh, Instagram at Mike just paints it. I think that there's a time and a place for everything. Um, it, it absolutely just depends on... 
uh, the theme of the shoe. Sometimes the artwork is plenty loud where you don't need a loud background at all. But sometimes what could be cool, one thing that I absolutely considered with these was shooting uh, these up against a background of just uh, paper and photoshopping the color of the paper and potentially doing one of the hues of orange. And I think that that might have been a unique look for these. Ultimately, we went with the uh, natural setting. We shot them outdoors in some rocks with a little bit of rock, a little bit of texture in the background. But I absolutely consider just shooting them up against uh, what I do, shoot it up against brown craft paper. And then I Photoshop the color of the uh, craft of the paper. So for example, I will uh, show real quickly here on uh, our Instagram. Let me see here. Reviewing your Instagram. So I'll show a pair where we shot the this pair of safari cleats and uh, I shot them up against a brown craft paper and then I changed the hue of the craft paper to be this orange which I thought just really, especially because uh, the main part of the cleats was navy blue. And as we all know about complementary colors, orange and blue are complementary colors. So obviously if you have an orange background, anything that's blue is really going to pop. So I just thought that this was a, uh, a, a, a way to really get that Seahawks blue in these to, to really pop out. And then once you uh, look past that, then you start to notice all of the different Safari prints. So... Definitely just a time and a place, but if you look right below that, we have a pair of Cheetah Yeezys. And uh, uh, this was uh, one of the first shoes Jason shot for us. This is summer of 2017. We did these, but we just thought that the uh, Cheetah Yeezys just uh, called to be shot naturally. The all black silhouette with the just the cheetah stripe that needed to be outdoors, uh, you know, just with... Uh, in that type of setting. So definitely just a time and a place for everything. So let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Retro Renewer with a great question of what is a good hourly rate price for a custom? So if you uh, take a look in our description, we have a video called uh, what you should be charging for custom sneakers. Now uh, in the description of this video, and I think it, it might be one of the first points that I talk about in the video, but uh, the uh, some U.S. department who regulates kind of what standard rates of labor should be for all the different fields of labor says that artists should be paid anywhere around, uh, you know, $20, $25 an hour or something like that. So that is absolutely a starting point, but then something that you need to consider past that is all of the materials, you know what I mean? So, you know, sometimes you're going to be working on a theme that requires a lot of different colors and a lot of different paints. And, you know, if there's a lot of different materials, then there's a lot of different additives and mediums and things like that. So it absolutely just depends on uh, so many different factors. But that video really helps you walk through uh, the mindset that you need to go through on how you can uh, kind of pick your own prices. So definitely check out that video. Um, okay. Uh, so Sadir had a uh, great fix for the uh, nighttime setting. Just change the white balance setting. No DSLR needed. Either all smartphones have that function. Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, the white balance. So you would be changing, you know, the essentially, uh, I'm not going to act like I understand how cameras work, but, uh, I just use the darn things. But yeah, when you change the white balance setting, what you're doing is then changing, you know, you, you can change the camera to work better in different lighting. So here in my studio, all of the lights are set to very, very white. It's called daylight type, uh, uh bulb temperature. So on the Calvin scale that, uh, this is how lights are, we're talking about incredibly boring stuff now. But there's a Kelvin scale, and that's how they measure kind of the hue or tint of lights and a lot of the very warm uh, bulbs that are typically used, um, you know, that, that are most common throughout households. They're a little bit less common now with uh, the modern style of decorating, but uh, they were very much uh, warm temperatured in the past. So that's why you had that very much yellow slash kind of orange lighting uh, when you look at older stuff. So, yes. Okay, let's see here. Uh, 
Uh, Tyler says, uh, what DSLR, DSLR do you use? So we have two. We have a uh, Canon 5D Mark III, and then we have a Canon EOS R. We picked up the EOS R in um, October, and it is nearly half the price of the 5D Mark III, but the EOS R is just uh, one of the top-of-the-line cameras out there right now. So that is a great camera. Um, I had a conversation with a... Uh, young gentleman the other day on uh, if he should pick up a camera or whatnot, and he was looking to spend around $300 on a DSLR. And I said, okay, do you have uh, in your pocket, do you have, you know, an iPhone? And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, which one? And I said, he said, I think the iPhone 11. And so the, the camera in the iPhone 11 in, in, in most iPhones is going to be worth a lot more than $300. So until you're likely probably around the $1,000 range, you don't even need to pick up a DSLR. You can do so much with a smartphone. You can do so much great uh, photography just doing a little bit of stuff as far as uh, little little tweaks with editing in, in a program like Lightroom or Snapseed. Those are going to go a long way. So... Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see. Yes, if there is anybody else who is down, we can take a look at some more Instagrams. Uh, let's see. How to clean a painted lace hole. So if we were talking about, like, uh, this question was asked by Melly. Um, painted lace holes. If we were talking about, like, on Converse, uh, there's a couple of easy ways that you can really clean them up. A lot of times, if the paint's a little bit older now, you can scrape it off with something like an airbrush needle, a toothpick, or you can, um, a lot of times, you can acetone it off. So dipping a Q-tip in acetone or deglazer will rub it off. Now, it depends on the type of metal that we are working with, because if anybody can think about a Jordan 12, I don't have any around here, but the top um, lace hole on a Jordan 12 is this little metal piece, but if you rub acetone on that, the way that the finish is on them, the metal is essentially going to rub off, and then it's like this clear plastic, so it's it almost starts as like a clear plastic that then is coated with like a, a metal finish, but if we're talking about Converse, you can absolutely sort of scrape off the paint on them. So, yes, uh, Lexus Perry says, do you have any tutorials on how to do mock-ups in Procreate? Yes, we have a few videos here on the page on uh, doing stuff in Procreate. Yes, there is uh, definitely a couple videos for you to check out. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Uh, da, da, da. let's check out, he uses, yes, uh, yes, yeah, so some great starter airbrushes, the Badger Patriot 105, the Iwata Eclipse, both of those are going to be either right around or under $100, and you will be able to do some cool stuff. <clears throat> Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yes, let's check out uh, our buddy Brandon Denton. Let's take a look at his Instagram. We are going to, uh, you guys will also be seeing more from Brandon on the page soon. Wink, wink, if you know what I mean. Uh, he will be featured very soon, but let's take a look at his Instagram. Uh, let me switch. Okay, so Brandon Denton, active on the story, and right away you guys will see Brandon absolutely very much so has a style, which is awesome, something that you are always looking for as an artist, a way to become recognized, a way for when somebody can kind of see a shoe and instantly kind of uh, recognize your name and start to think about you, that is one way for you to absolutely grow very fast as an artist. So achieving your own style over time is a great move. Uh, Brandon, uh, I'm very familiar with his work, always, always, almost always goes with the concrete look, which you can, it fits any theme, and it very much fits his themes, uh, which are heavily textured, and using just that concrete background, it, uh, it, it, it only helps, so I also love these shots when you have uh, one shoe it blurred out in the background, and you have another shoe a little bit closer in focus, both shoes fill up the entire frame, and so this is, uh, Always good stuff. The photography totally gets the job done. One thing that I would consider, uh, Brandon, is uh, 
I know you do a lot of the cartoon work. And one thing that, in my opinion, can, can add to the cartoon work sometime is if you shot these in a little bit less of a textured environment. So if you were to shoot these just up against, uh, you know, a, a blank wall or something that doesn't have any texture, that's when people could get really lost in the uh, the sketch theme. You know what I mean? That's where it could almost look like, what am, what am I looking at? Am I looking at a... A, a, a drawing right now? Is is that a shoe sketched onto paper or what is that? So something to consider with your very cool uh, cartoon themes. That is uh, one way to think about those. But when you're doing the absolutely crazy, the Basquiat stuff, and uh, that's when it's, it's a great idea to shoot it up against the texture. You know, these Jordan 3s here, uh, I, I would totally do the same of shooting these up against a textured concrete background, but just something to consider with... Um, the cartoon stuff. So yeah, Brand look, look at this stuff, man. Brandon's work is so dope. So dope. I love it. I love it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Uh, Brandon knows how I feel about uh, about uh, painting on midsoles and soles. So no need to no need to go into there. But yeah, uh, sometimes moving into the uh, moving into the grass also, but look at look at how much these uh, DS2 Air Forces pop up against the grass. It is just it is awesome stuff. The work the work just really really pops. And uh, uh, my three my three uh, background textures that in my opinion almost always work is um, brick, grass, and concrete. And anybody can anybody can shoot up against those three things. Now, if you're in uh, some of the colder places, you might not always have some nice green grass to shoot up against. Uh, there's definitely some months here in Chicago where we can't necessarily shoot outside against grass. So I have a, a nice little turf set up. But um, sometimes uh, those those three can can you you almost always will be able to fit almost anything to at least one of those three textures. So uh, definitely, definitely some cool stuff. Brandon has uh, definitely improved over the years too. And uh, he's just really honed in on his style and uh, doubled down on it, essentially. You know what I mean? Uh, what I like is when you get a shoe from Brandon, you know what you're getting. You know what you're getting. You know what I mean? So... Uh, Funny enough, uh, the first giveaway we ever had here on YouTube was uh, a video. I think it was called like uh, Seven Tips for Customizers or something like that. We had like a, I think we might have done it for hitting a thousand subscribers or 1,500 subscribers or something like that. We gave away an Angela Starter Kit and Brandon was the winner. So Brandon has been following us since we started on YouTube. But of course, that doesn't mean that we're going to play favorites either. I'm of course going to give a critique when a critique is needed to be given and stuff. So as far as in the bio, I touched on this last time. Uh, we have prices, $80 and up, and then don't waste my time saying I'll let you know. As a customizer, if anybody's done this for any length of time, you have heard countless people say I'll let you know. And I absolutely get it. I absolutely get it. But I think sometimes uh, if somebody's finding you for the first time, the, the only issue I have with that is that if somebody's finding you for the first time, you might just kind of rub them the wrong way right away of rather than just having, you know, some something else in your uh, in your bio, you know, potentially where you're from, you know, kind of what's going to separate you from everybody else, what makes you different from other customizers. So sometimes I think that you could potentially be getting off on the wrong foot by, uh, I know last time we did this, we had somebody say, if uh, don't waste my time or you'll be blocked, something like that. So to me, just uh, be, a, be a glass half full kind of guy. Assume that People are going to waste your time. It's inevitable. It's part of any business that people are always going to flake and things like that too, but you kind of want to start out on the right foot. So just something to consider. It's just uh, my viewpoint, but hey, uh, that's what that's what, that's what what I got to give, right? I got I to gotta be honest. I got to give my viewpoint. So absolutely. Let's see here. Absolutely. Um, okay. Let me uh, switch over here. Switch over here. Uh, we got some, uh, great people still hanging us out, hanging out with us here in the chat. I get to go for a, uh, a little bit longer, uh, maybe 10 minutes or so, and then we will, uh, call it a day. We've already been going. How long have we been going? We've been going a while. We have been going a while, guys. This has been a good time. Uh, let me see here. 
uh, Jar Customs, that Fire and Ice Custom was one of my favorite customs I've done. Yeah, Jar, that pair, uh, if you guys haven't seen them, make sure everybody goes and follows our buddy uh, Jar Customs also. He did a really cool pair of Fire and Ice themed air forces that turned out absolutely awesome uh if you guys another really cool pair that i saw this week was rupsy did this incredible purple haze pair of jordan ones right in time for uh uh 420 i'm almost surprised you didn't wait to post those uh on that monday but <laughs> i hear you man those turned out badass so everybody check out those uh all we want to do is help uh build the community and show support to one another uh, Mel from The Right Magic says, I shoot all of my finished products in my studio's work desk. I use natural lighting, ring lights, faux fur being held up by clips and collapse boxes. Works well. Yes, yeah, so you might potentially look at her page and think there's some extravagant setup, and yet here she is saying, I move all of my paint and work stuff aside. I set up, I make a little makeshift uh, little studio setup and some good natural lighting, and then, you know, you bring in a little ring light, a little $50 light, and uh, you make a little set and you, uh, you you make it happen however you can, however you can to uh, capture capture the photos and photography and quality is always going to go a long way, guys. So whatever you got to do to make it happen. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Let's see here. Uh, I need a gra <laughs> uh, James says I need a grass rug. My backyard looks thumbs down. Yeah, so believe me, I know what that's like here in Chicago. There's many months where uh, all the grass is dead, and we cannot do things like that. So um, yeah, sometimes picking up a uh, a uh, turf roll is, uh, and then you could cut it down is absolutely uh, something to consider. Also, uh, Nick Kessler says anyone have success selling already made customs on eBay or Etsy? I'm not ready for a commission style business just yet. So yeah, um, I mean, when you're just starting out, there is, uh, I, I absolutely think post in, post in, in other places also to try to get, uh, try to get seen, you know, sometimes you might get lucky and somebody might find, uh, you know, your page, uh, on eBay or, you know, you might get lucky with tags and, and keywords and things like that on Etsy. So if you don't already have just like a, a really solid and, uh, built out website, just, just kind of post in all those places and you might, uh, get seen and, and just be getting in front of as many eyes as possible is definitely going to be uh, the goal when you are starting out. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see here. I'll go ahead. We will answer. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do two more questions. We will do two more questions, guys, and then we will call it a Friday. We will call it a Friday after two more questions. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh, real quickly, one, uh, we won't count this as one of the two, but unknown, uh, X, X flow says, are there any alternatives to procreate or Photoshop? So if you're just looking for a free software, there is something that you can use called photo P.com. Now that's photo P H O T O. And then P E A, like, uh, you know, the, the vegetable, a P.com. And, uh, that is very similar to Photoshop. It, it's going to look pretty darn close. And uh, you'll be able to do a lot of the stuff that you can do in Photoshop on there. Uh, uh, Dread Eye says, if you knock out the tongue and sock liner first, uh, that's after the prep work, correct? Yes, absolutely. So prep the entire shoe first. And then what I did on these was prep the entire shoe. And then before I laid any paint on the rest of the upper, I knocked out the sock liner and the tongue. The reason that I like to do that first is let's say I painted everything on the upper and saved that for last. Then I would be trying to mask off a lot of stuff and a lot of painted panels already and then trying to control a lot of the spray in here. But when you're really trying to get in there and trying to paint every crevice inside uh, what we refer to as the guts of the shoe, uh, it's pretty likely that it's going to get messy and things like that. So I like to knock that out first. So absolutely. Uh, GIMP is open source and very capable, much more than Photop. Yeah, so hey, whatever works best for you, whatever works best for you. Yeah, uh, I, I've never used GIMP. Uh, I've heard of I've heard of people, but yeah, I remember I just stumbled across uh, Photop one day. 
uh, working on a uh, working on a laptop where I didn't have Photoshop and needed to do something real quick and uh, open it up and it certainly looks like Photoshop so you can do uh, some of the stuff that you need to so uh, yes let's see here close out the live chat accidentally let me pull that up again uh, Brandon Moody says, color choices, is there a method you use? So there absolutely is based off of, um, you know, you can start to look into color theory. You can look at color wheels. You can sometimes look at, you know, what makes, what makes a theme just click sometimes. And, and if you take a look at a pair like this that I kind of touched on in the video, I think one of the things that really makes something like this click is essentially the use of complementary colors or, you know, uh, sometimes when we talk about warm colors versus cool colors, and if we look near the back of the shoe, we have very much what is considered cool colors of blues and purples, but yet they're right up against this medial panel, which has very warm colors of orange and yellow. So having those two opposites right up against each other is kind of what makes those uh, so loud and, and pop and just really uh, come together and tie the whole theme together. So, you know, it's not like there's one blanket answer on how you decide what colors to use. It's, it's very much up to interpretation, and just playing around sometimes in software and testing out um, that that's the best that's the best thing to do when uh, starting out before you lay down any paint is just test out your themes in uh, a mock-up software so absolutely uh, Brandy says are there any other leather paint leather paint brands besides Angelus there is not to my knowledge, a uh, any other leather paint brand specifically, but Jacquard is also another very popular. Uh, shoe painting uh, paint. Um, now it's not specifically made for uh, leather, but uh, a lot of people have great success using it. And a nice thing about it is that it is airbrush ready. So you don't need any other mediums. Uh, Watson says, does nail varnish remover help get the factory finish off Air Forces? Uh, nail polish remover is not strong enough in my opinion. So I touched on this a little bit earlier, but if we ranked uh, the three things as far as um, acetone, deglazer, and nail polish remover. Nail polish remover is way at the bottom in terms of strength. Uh, deglazer is a very strong product. You can absolutely use it, but acetone is going to be even stronger than those. So uh, just something to consider. I definitely would not recommend just using um, uh, nail polish remover. So Tio, uh, I'm sorry I can't uh, read your name because it's in symbols, but you asked a question about a uh, a... You're trying to create a futuristic look. If you go back in the stream, I'm not sure at what minute mark specifically, but I definitely touched on your question, I would probably say about an hour ago. So definitely go back and uh, check that out. But I did get to your question. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I really appreciate it. These streams are always fun. I appreciate all of you guys, uh, you know, whether it's sending in super chats to support the page, uh, just hanging out here. Um, joining in the chat, supporting other artists, and uh, hanging out with me, asking your questions. I greatly appreciate it. Anytime I could be of service to you guys, uh, I don't take it lightly that you guys tune in and, and care for what I have to say. It absolutely means a lot to me. And uh, during these crazy times when uh, you know we're all quarantined and I'm even used to being isolated, to have people tune in, want to hang out with me, want to hang out in the chat, ask questions, just talk custom shoes, it is an awesome thing. I'm so thankful that we have this community built here. It is uh, so cool to see it grow. I think I saw we just passed uh, 110,000 subscribers. So the Toothpick Gang is, uh, we're not slowing down, all right? After that 100K, we ain't slowing down, guys. We just hit that a month ago, and we're still growing. So on the road to, uh, on the road to a million. But, you know, we got quite a few milestones along the way. But uh, yeah, so thank you everybody for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, really, this week, guys, I, I really felt the love. There was just an outpouring of support on uh, this, this creating this video that we had this week, doing this pair. It just felt special. I just felt it working, uh, creating OCD Custom, who you guys also might know as uh, Sammy Joe, uh, a great friend of the page, incredible artist bringing this design to life. I very much look forward to doing this again in the future. I think we very soon will likely hopefully put out another contest where you guys have the potential to create a theme and uh, we try to bring it to life because I had so much fun reverse engineering these. 
So thank you guys so much. Oh, you know what? I didn't even mention it. A lot of people already clicked out, but I have some cool news. One thing that I've been working on uh, that I really want to do that I think will be of great service is I want to create a guide, a PDF downloadable. Uh, the first option is going to be free, a free option for you guys to download that will really help you with custom sneaker photography and how anybody can do it and how important it is and things to consider when when we're posting the Instagram uh, aspect ratios, uh, just a lot of stuff to consider um, how important it is. And I really want to put out a free version that everybody can, can download and, and use. And then I also want to really dive into creating an even deeper paid for version that will really go into a ton of stuff. So the free version will be a little bit of a teaser. You will be able to take plenty away from it. I don't want to force you into you have to buy the paid version because I know so much of our audience is just starting out. A lot of people find us who are just starting out. I'm not going to be able to convince them. Here, spend this money with me right away to get this paid. Can't even imagine what I'll be able to learn from the paid one. So that's something that we're working on. I really want that to be, uh, of course, of a high quality and so that's something that I have been working on. I'm very excited about that. So stay tuned in the future of that. Thank you guys so much for your support. Really, truly appreciate it. Go ahead, follow some other people that you talk to here in the chat. Show them some love on Instagram. We can all grow together. There is plenty for all of us to eat. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it as always. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Stay safe.